Hey, welcome back guys. So lately, I've been struggling trying to come up with new ideas for videos. Um, Windows 11 is uh, most likely going to be officially released in a few months, and it's not like I can get new hardware to test it out on. And uh, doing the same old thing with older hardware gets rather repetitive. Yeah, I probably spend way too much time trying to think of something creative anyways. So, I ended up coming up with the bright idea of trying to see how low-end I could go and still run Windows 11. Unfortunately, this means to get the latest release based on 21H2, I had to go around Windows itself. The latest dev release is able to be installed as an update on supported machines if you sign up as an insider and enable dev updates in your Windows update settings. Then it's as simple as getting a Windows update. Of course, this machine isn't supported, so I did have to go a different route. Using the site uupdump.net, and I'll, I'll link it below for you guys, uh, you can set up and download a script that will download all the files directly from Microsoft and build the latest developer preview into an ISO. Of course, this PC still won't pass the compatibility check, so what I ended up having to do is mount the Windows 11 ISO, then I had to go into the Sources folder, copy the install.esd, or install.win file depending on how you built your ISO and then paste that file into the sources folder on my Windows 10 installer USB drive overwriting the original file and that actually worked it let me install Windows 11 onto this PC despite not meeting the requirements this PC is built with an ASUS Sabertooth 990FX Revision 1 motherboard with a blazingly slow Sempron 145 2.8GHz single core CPU along with 8GB of DDR3 and a Radeon HD 7790 GPU so let me go ahead and get everything set up, drivers installed, and then we'll check back. Alright, drivers are installed, everything's set up and ready to go, and uh, might as well see how it performs in some general tasks like uh, YouTube and the Edge browser. There are some background tasks running as well, like Steam, but it seems like the biggest hog of the CPU right now is Windows itself. The anti-malware service is still chugging along where with a faster modern CPU it would be finished before you even realize it was running. But it's going to take a while with this CPU. But the browser will take priority and as you can see in the task manager the CPU will stick to 100% usage the entire time the browser is open. I found a nature video and uh, we're probably going to stick to 720p playback with it and as you can see in a normal window it does quite well. Making a window larger does cause it to lag right away, but that soon smooths out, and uh, much the same thing happens with full screen mode. So 720p video is actually quite good, uh, but it's probably the limit with a Sempron, so I'm not even going to go and try anything higher. And of course we're going to test out some gaming, and a couple things to mention about that. This CPU can't do modern intensive games under any operating system, so I'm going to stick to games that it should be able to run, even if not well. Also, I'll be running MSI Afterburner and logging the benchmark data, which uh, actually does have an effect on a slow single core CPU, so that's something else to keep in mind. And lastly, I'm running a Sempron completely stock, nothing's overclocked, and no other settings have been tweaked. If you guys want to see uh, if it's any better with the CPU memory, etc. has been tweaked, then uh, let me know below. Alright, so let's kick things off with Cinebench R15 to show off the awesome power of the CPU. And as you can see, we scored a whopping 63 points. And up next is 3D Mark Fire Strike. It's struggling to open a results screen, so you know the score is going to be huge. An overall score of 2335 with a physics score of 956. Okay, now for the games, I'm just going to roll some screen capture footage and uh, I'll show the afterburner uplay with the current and average frame rates, 1%, 1% lows, along with the frame time graph. And uh, keep an eye on that CPU usage, it'll probably never come off 100%. But once the game captures are done, I'll come back and wrap this up.
All right, time for the conclusion. I'm just going to say that Sempron still suck, and uh, Windows 11 does absolutely nothing to fix that. This little Sempron really tried, though. Sometimes it seemed like it was doing quite well, but the experience overall was really a stuttery mess at times, with some games even completely locking up for upwards of 30 seconds. But as far as usability with Windows 11 for general usage, it can get some stuff done. Maybe not the quickest, but it shows that, at least for now, uh, Windows 11 is no more resource intensive than Windows 10. Well, it pretty much is Windows 10 right now with a fancy new dress on. And in the process of making this video, I tested Athlon 2 Dual Cores, Quad Cores, and Phenom 2 Triple, Quad, and Six Cores. I thought I might hit a spot where I could go no lower, but I made it all the way to this mighty Sunprod. If you guys want to see Windows 11 on any of those other CPUs, also let me know below. And uh, to go back further, I'm going to have to install it on an AM2 motherboard, so if that's something you guys want me to try, uh, also let me know below. So that was kind of fun and interesting at the same time. Anyways, you guys take care, and I'll see you on the next one.